Hello. Hey, how you going? Going good. How are you? I, I'm I'm excellent, thank you. This is now this is my first ever one of these Instagram lives. So you let me know if I'm doing this correctly, or if I've got to change anything, or if I'm too close or not. But it's lovely to see you and to see you all your many Sorry? many followers there putting in their comments and best wishes. But uh, yeah, great yes. to see you. How are you? I am doing fantastic, Adam. How are things at your end? First up, thank you for joining me live. And I could, I will, I'm considering myself as the privileged one because everyone wants a piece of you. Everyone wants to talk to you, but you have chosen to come live with me. I thank you for the bottom, from the bottom of my heart for connecting live. <laughs> and uh, uh, tell me, how's everyone at home? Yeah, we're, we're going well. Thanks, uh, Madonna. And um, yeah, look, I'll say it was, uh, it was great. I was thrilled to be asked, invited by you to, to come and have a chat since our, that first interaction back in November when you uh, were a wonderful host and MC for myself and our, uh, our Premier, which I guess for, for more Indian fans would be um, Chief Minister from Western Australia. We were out there and had a great trip. So it was wonderful to to meet you and work with you and uh, and now to be chatting but we are we're going well we're um you know obvious notwithstanding what's going on around the world um mm -hmm. we've like the rest of the world we've been sort of in lockdown but perth and western australia have done mm -hmm. really well in just keeping um keeping the spread of the virus down uh, the number of um, cases is, is really low comparative to the rest of the world. So our lockdown hasn't been too bad. We've been able to get out a little bit and exercise and, and the kids are back at school. Um, I worked out that as a home teacher, I'm a very good cricketer. I'm not a very good teacher. So um, <laughs> the best place for my kids is to be back at school. But, but we're all well and happy and healthy. So that's, that's all, all a bonus. It's nice to hear such positive news when, uh, you know, people are so scared and in a, in a total panic mode at the moment. Uh, back here in India, the number of COVID-19 cases have increased. However, uh, the government and uh, people who are at home are trying their level best. So hoping to see the light of day soon. Yeah. And uh, but yet things are still very, very uncertain. So, uh, Adam, talking about uncertainties, let's go back to the 2007 World Cup. The team had a plan. It rained, reduced to 38 overs, but you were completely unaffected, walked in and scored those whooping 149 runs of 104 balls. We enjoyed those 34s and 8 super 6s. So you know it all, how to deal with uncertainty. Tell us, how does one maintain their sanity in situations such as these? Yeah, well, um, to be honest, I actually fell asleep just before going out to bat that day. <laughs> it was, um, you're right, we got to the game and okay. we won the toss. They had the toss and we won the toss and chose to bat. But then it rained. So we knew we were batting. <laughs> But um, there was a delay. So, uh, and you're right, it, it's a bit of an uncertainty there about what time we were going to go out there, whether to switch on mentally and be ready. And I, I felt myself being a little bit anxious. So I went and found a quiet area at the back of the change room in the gymnasium, put my head down just to rest, um, just not with the intention of falling asleep, but I, I crashed out. And then really? literally the umpires... <laughs> The umpires were going out to start the game and the guys came out and someone found me and said, come on, let's, you got to get out there. But so <laughs> I guess, I guess one thing there is it's nice to be in a nice relaxed mindset before you take on any challenge, but it's a, it's a good question. I reckon Madonna about um, uncertainty, uh, fear, uh, which I think there's been a lot of that around the world at the moment, the, the fear of the unknown about yes. how long is this going to go? How long are we going to be locked down? How long is it going to affect our lives and our businesses or our schooling, our education? Um, mm -hmm. So people are fearful of that. And a lot of people ask me about nerves. You know, do you get nervous before a big game or before presenting? And, and, and I mean, I, might, I guess you yourself must before you get up to do a big presentation or run an event. Um, and I've found that 
if I could ask myself, have I done all the preparation? Have I done everything right? Have I, in a cricket sense, have I done all the skills training? Am I physically fit enough? Have I eaten the right foods and prepared well enough? It's amazing if you can say yes to all that, how the nerves subside and the fear is a little bit less. And mm -hmm. even in these uncertain times around what's happening at the moment, I think that's where you've got to trust the foundations of your life and, and the way you operate and what's important to you and your values. Trust those and you can do away with a bit of the fear because those foundations are what will carry you through good times and, and challenging times. Absolutely. So staying focused and being positive is the key according to you. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think um, Steve Waugh was a great leader uh, of, of the cricket teams I played in. He was a wonderful captain. And he always had this quote. He, he wrote a quote up on a, in a team meeting very early in my career, and I always remembered it. And it says, attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth catching? Now, I know the word oh. contagious is a bit... <laughs> a bit uh, risky to throw around at the moment with what's going on. But no, I think everyone listening can understand attitudes are contagious. Is yours worth mm -hmm. catching? And in a team environment, that's really important. But even individually through tough times, you can ask yourself that. What's your attitude going to be? Um, is it positive or negative? And if it's positive, you've got a chance to, to build and go. If it's negative, it's going to sort of filter to others and that's going to bring everything down. Sure. Talking about attitude, you know, being good is easy, but being just very, very difficult. But you throughout your career, you have been so fair. You're known to walk off the field Contrary to the decision of the umpire, when you consider yourself to be out, not only that, also uh, you, you retired at just the right time when you missed to take the catch of previous Lakshman. How do you always manage to take such commendable decisions instantly, Adam? Uh, oh, look, I think I, I, I didn't, um, I wasn't on any crusade by way of being a walker to make other people do it. It's just the way you play your cricket. I think there's a lot more people that walked in the game than, than are given credit for. Uh, just happened in a World Cup semi-final. I did it and a lot of the world cricket world paid attention to it and couldn't believe it. But um, I wish I didn't nick the ball that day. I would prefer to have kept batting, but that's just the way it went. Uh, and as far as retiring at the right time, I always felt like I'd rather retire and have people say why as opposed to play on and people say why haven't you retired wow. um, yeah so I'd rather I'd rather that but um, yeah I think it just comes again from the foundations of your life I think from your, your parents your upbringing the people that were around you that's the way you play your game so um, just trying to you know be fair and honest about it um, and you know I reckon it's a good reason to, to retire if you drop VVS Laxman in a test match. You don't want to give him too many chances because he, <laughs> along with most of the other Indian batting lineup in those days, used to smash us. Uh, and then Harbison had come out and bowl us out. So it was pretty easy to get out of there and, and say, that's me done for a while. But it's really nice to see that's what we love about you. You've always accepted everything that life has thrown at you. That's absolutely commendable. Now, talking about your uh, partnership, one of the most talked about partnership, the fearsome double trouble, I would call it, <laughs> with uh, Matthew Hayden. Tell yep. us about the importance of how we works more than me in achieving anything in life. Yeah, uh, I mean... Yeah, cricket in particular. Cricket's a funny game, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a team game, but it's so individual in what you do in so many parts of it. At the end of the day, a bowler is in control. He bowls, he or she bowls the ball. A batsman, a batter is there to, you know, you, only you play the shot. But there's a whole lot of partnerships involved, and it's so important at, at certain stages of cricket to have a, um, a really strong partnership forged. And I think... That for me, you know, with Matty Hayden, it was just all about fun and trust, trust in each other. Uh, I used to love going out there with him. He was such a you know, big bloke, big burly frame walk out there. And he, he was just massive. He, you know, and he'd get out there and 
it's funny if in most partnerships there's a bit of oh, what do they say yin and yang a bit of you know you don't mm-hmm. want to be too alike there's almost opposites attract and I, I i hated sledging on the field not not that i was squeaky clean and quiet but i didn't go looking for it whereas hados he'd walk out there looking for a fight and he'd be saying something <laughs> and then you know, I mentioned Harbison before. Harbison was always ready for a, a niggle and a fight, and those two used to go at it. Or Zahir Khan in the World Cup mm. final in 2003. Uh, whereas mm. I just tried to just play because if I said something, I'd get nervous that I was going to get out. Whereas Haydos mm-hmm. carry on. So I used to love sneaking in behind him. He'd be out there big and and whacking it around, and I just sort of sneak in under the radar behind him. But but it was um, it was good. Good fun, as I say. It's all about fun and then trusting. You know, he, he'd know if I was scoring quickly, he could trust that he could just take it a bit easier and vice versa and, um, or a certain bowler that he wanted to have a go for. Um, just trust each other that the judgment is right. So that, that was a great thing about Ados, just good fun and, and a lot of trust. We all know you as a great uh, partner, not only uh, on field but also off field. So how are your innings at home with your life partner? <laughs> yeah, my wife Mel. Um, we've been together. We just last week we had our uh, our wedding anniversary. Um, Twenty twenty six years. Um, wow. Which is the, sorry, sorry, my bad. Twenty four years. I've added a couple on. Twenty four oh. years. Um, yeah. So uh, we've been together a long time. Here you have been a typical husband of forgetting the anniversary. How many <laughs> no. years? Really. Uh, I'm glad I added, I, I, I over club rather than under club, but yeah, 24 years. Uh, it's been awesome. We got uh, four beautiful young kids and, uh, well, one's not so young anymore. He's 18, so he's bossing me around. But um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, I guess what you mentioned about partnerships and trust and, um, you know, both adding different elements to the, to the partnership and relationship, but uh, Mel's been amazing, been on the journey with me right from sort of schoolboy cricket up to cricket at the highest level, been on that whole journey. So that's been really nice to share that together. And there's no doubt about it. Uh, whenever I thought I was going okay and getting ahead of myself, she was pretty quick to keep me grounded and remind me of how daggy I was at school. Sweet. That's that's a wonderful bond you guys share, and it's it's really nice to hear about Mel. Uh, now, um, uh, tell me what are the chores that you all do right now? The household chores together, or what are the other things that you've indulged in during this lockdown? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of chores. That's that's the one thing. We, <laughs> I'm in a life and lifestyle, and always have been that travels a fair bit. So when you are home, that's when Mel goes right. Okay, there's the list. <laughs> Get to it. Um, we are we are we're very lucky. We're in a, a nice backyard with a lot of trees, but they're um, deciduous trees, so they drop their leaves. And we're heading into you know that sort of autumn winter stage. So leaves are everywhere. So I'm forever out the back raking leaves up and uh, tidying the garden. Usual chores: putting the bins out, doing all that, making beds, changing beds, doing the washing. It's good fun. It's all good. It's all part it's of the sweet. Or part of the You're role. a wonderful husband too. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm doing anything more than any other husband does. <laughs> Trust me, not not all men, you know, kind of come ahead and help. But right now they don't have a choice. Yeah, that's it's right. locked down. And they there are, are no house there's no house help. So people have to get together and work together as a team. Yeah. Uh, have you tried any new skill recently or something interesting? Well, I have. I know that you um, you are keen to to sort of test anyone that you chat with about what this new skill is. So I've come prepared. I've rated a little, well, about two or three weeks ago, um, we started this little challenge in the house. And it's fair to say, so I'm one of six in our family here. Obviously, Mel, myself and four kids. Um, All right. Eldest child, 18. Youngest child, right. eight. And it's fair mm-hmm. to say I'm still the worst at this, but I'm going to just show you, see if I can give you an example here of what it is. Let's go back right. here. I don't know if it's still in camera or not, or if you can hear me, but look, I've got some juggling balls here. I'm going to see how I go. So I think that, hang on. That, 
How's that? Oh, no, dropped another one. <laughs> on, now I know why you got a six, but it'll be quite good though. <laughs> there you go. That's about, oh, that's about as long as I can wow. go. Wow. So, that's fantastic. That, that's my skill. Jug, that, that, that looks so much fun. <laughs> that looks so much challenge. fun, but it, it is not as easy as it, look, as it looks though, right? I don't think I made it look easy, but um, yeah, good for the mind. Apparently, it stimulates the mind and and concentration and all uh, various parts of the brain get um, stimulation from juggling. So give it a go. Don't need to have professional juggling balls, apples, oranges, cricket balls. I like the apples, oranges. Yeah, that sounds cool too. All right, uh, in your uh, entire career, which role did you enjoy the most, in front of the stumps or behind? Uh, I think, yeah, I've been asked that a bit. I, I think the batting came a bit more naturally. I had to work harder at the wicket keeping. I wasn't a natural wicket keeper, but I loved, I loved that you're involved in every single delivery as a wicket keeper. So that was what inspired me to keep working hard at it and, and giving it a go. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, if I got runs, I enjoyed the batting. <laughs> when I got a duck, I enjoyed the wee keeping. All right. So it is said hard work always uh, overcomes talent. So I think you were talented with the bat, but because of your hard work, you go, you went down in history to be known as a legendary wicket keeper too. So there is one more Indian cricketer as passionate as you. Great, stupendous with the bat and his glove. A renowned captain, too. They call him Captain Cool. You know who I'm talking mm, about. Dhoni. Yeah. What do you think about Dhoni? MS Dhoni. God, talk about cool. He's uh, he's just a, a champion. I've loved the way... I really loved just watching his career develop and the way he came onto the scene with this amazing hundred, um, you know, that just set everyone off on loving him and following him and the style of cricket that he played. But his rise to fame and, and fortune and everything and that expectation in a country like India, which are so passionate about so many things and certainly cricket, um, I think the way that he's handled himself was uh, extraordinary. And, you, you know, his calmness, his calmness on the field and then, you know, the bit that I've observed and got to know him a little bit off the field, it's, it's extraordinary. So there's a lot to be admired there. And, um, yeah, his, his uh, lasting legacy and, and impact on Indian cricket and I guess society in India will be long lasting. Just as you, Adam, we adore and love you both. You got a glimpse of it in November when you tried to move around the streets in <laughs> Delhi. You did. You took elaborate measures to disguise yourself, but you know, <laughs> Indians, we are cricket fans. They spotted you somehow and mobbed you in the middle of a busy street. How did you escape from there? Yeah, no, it's always good fun. I love, love India. Love, uh, you know, it's always treats us all so, uh, so well, so hospitable. Um, yeah, we stopped with the, the chief minister to, to look at the the salt march, the, the Gandhi statue, and that pretty much stopped, stopped the traffic. But, um, but there was one time, um, the morning that we were in Mumbai, where I went, I got up really early and went for a jog um, around the water there and mm -hmm. had the hat on, had sunglasses on, earphones in, had the head down. Uh, I tell you what, there's a few keen fit Indian cricket fans there. Once I was spotted, they kept running and running and running and just chased me uh, for the selfie. And uh, it was great fun. Always, always entertaining and always plenty of energy over there. And I look forward to, um, I'm not sure when the next trip will be. We'll have to wait and see where it all lands, but can't wait to be back there. So the moral of the story is whatever you do, don't move around on the streets of uh, <laughs> India. I think I've got it. I think I've got it easy compared to the Indian superstars over there. All right. So, um, what do you love the most about India? India, uh, I think it's a combination of the the people, the way we're made to feel so at home. The food, I love Indian food. I mean, there was a time when. Australian cricket teams feared going to India, nonetheless, because most of them didn't like the food. 
And I think that mm -hmm. was in, in eras gone by when um, you weren't really exposed to, to Indian food and cuisine as much as what we are now. Um, and I think even in Australia now, the, the sort of uh, multicultural feel of dining options has broadened our horizons. But I've always loved uh, the Indian food. So going over there, um, I had three years in Hyderabad uh, in the IPL. So the biryani obviously was famous out there. And then the, you know, and then the, the tandoor oven. But didn't you have Delhi Belly with the masala, <laughs> the spices? <laughs> Fortunately not. Touch, touch wood. I've never, never been sick from um, being, you know, the deli belly, as they say. So I love it. The, the hotter, the better. I reckon you get enough spice in there, that'll kill off any bug. But, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> love, love the food uh, and the people. And then I've, I've loved all the extremes of um, the different parts of India, whether it's, you know, down around Kerala and the, and the waterways down there or, uh, you know, Mumbai is one of the great cities of the world. Um, and then you go right up north, up to Dharamsala, which I think is just one of the most picturesque places I've ever been. Probably, probably my favourite career ground in the world, really, perched up there in the you know, foothills of the Himalayan mountains. So fascinating countryside wow. uh, and always, as I say, always filled with a lot of love and, and warm welcome. Well, next time you come to Mumbai, I'm going to de definitely take you around. I don't know how I'll manage to do that, but I'll try my level best to take you around. And uh, uh, we could have some uh, Pani Puri. They call it Golgappa. Have you heard of it? What was it again? A Pani Puri, Golgappa. No, I well, will describe that. I think I might have. Is that... Yes, it, it is this uh, round hollow puri. It yes. has uh, yes. the spicy and tangy water with some chickpeas. Love it. I have had that. I tell you who I had that you with. Um, a great chef from Mumbai, Saranch Goyla, who um, oh. has the Goyla butter chicken. He does a beautiful butter chicken, but um, where he smokes it. But uh, he, he um, made some of that for me on a trip previously over to India. Beautiful. Nice, nice. I'm glad you love Indian food and, and I'm even happier to hear that your tummy can cope up with it because most of <laughs> most people uh, abroad cannot handle the spices since you, you, you guys do not add much spices to your food, right? Uh, so Yeah, depends. I, I always add a little bit in there. I've just, I'm just looking down at, as I say, I'm new to this whole game here, this live stuff. I've just seen um, a comment from a very good friend of mine, Harmeet Singh, who played in the, uh, that Hyderabad team, the Deccan Chargers, uh, back in the IPL. In, uh, he's from, um, he's uh, from up in the Punjab region, but he's a terrific mate of mine. So nice to see him online. G'day, Harmeet. He, he was in the winning IPL team of 2009. Bowled a brilliant spell ah, and took Deccan a great Chargers. catch. All right. Uh, since you spoke about IPL, in fact, I got an interesting question from one of the fans here, uh, Shreyas Syd. I I don't know if the handle is right. He wants to ask you: uh, Are you fond of the 2020 format? Although you've played IPL, what do you think about the 2020 format? Yeah, uh, love it, love it. My my favourite format is still Test cricket. I reckon that's the best, the best cricket that you can play. It's the greatest Test, and that's why it's called that. So. Um, it's an amazing journey. It's a bit like a, a snapshot of life, a test match, because you go up and down and up and down and up and down, and it's, it's long. Yeah. But T20, um, great fun, great entertainment. It's just um, what the current world, you know, prior to everything that's happened, but certainly the, the world love it, and it's a great way to get new people watching it. And, you know, England, it, it started pretty much in England, but the way the IPL really launched it on a global scale was fascinating and that that's one of the highlights of my career to have been involved in the first ever IPL and just seeing what it was all about and, and seeing uh, cricket get married up with Bollywood and the passion of all the fans all thrown in there together it was it was an amazing time that's 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 really nice to hear. It's very exciting for all fans to watch because there are some people who are not fond of cricket, but because of the 2020 format, also they've come on board and now enjoying the sport too. Yeah. On that note, I am now going to go to the mad rad section, the okay. segment of uh, Life Connect with you. Now, Gilly, all the seriousness out. 
you have to either be mad or totally rad right all right and uh, it's like a rapid fire round you have to be quick with your replies mm mm-hmm. all right so I'm are ready. you ready for this with which of the teams below you've enjoyed your rivalry on field the most england new zealand india quick 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 india all right since you said that now tell me a word you've heard on the field from indian cricketers every time you were uh, you know scoring those runs uh, i i can't remember what the word was no it wasn't so much scoring runs it was every time harbison got me out I, I, there there was a word that I, I'm not sure that I should be saying, but um, it was most times that I played Harbison. Um, yes, no, I'm sure I, there were some rosy words out there for you. <laughs> it pretty much got me All out right, most I'm, time. I'm going to my next one. Choose between being a commentator or coach. Commentator. Yes, I know you said that earlier. You don't like teaching. Chocolate or caramel? Caramel. caramel fantastic even i love caramel too all right now rank these wicket keepers in order of your preference not uh, not according to the numbers that are internationally but according to your preference sangakara ms dhoni brendan mcclin mark butcher oh look it got to be dhoni my name's gilly not silly and i understand that i'm talking to <laughs> an indian with a lot of indian supporters on of course donnie's up the top <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah so what was it it was uh samara ms, MS doni brendan yeah. oh, and have mark to put, have to put sanger up there he's um you know what a what a legend brendan mccallum and and mark boucho unfortunately career cut a little bit short with a an eye injury but uh what outstanding group of cricketers there We keep yes. a bad I want to add your name here but then it would have been really difficult for you right <laughs> <laughs> It would for me it is Adam Gilchrist Adam Gilchrist Adam Gilchrist Adam Gilchrist oh, all the way on Thank you I'll take that I'll take that <laughs> I'm sure you've had a lot of female fan following so any cheesy pickup line used on you No that that I used to use No anyone any any female fan used on you No, no, not really. Um I I remember doing a TV commercial in India for one of our IPL sponsors and I had to be trying to impress a lady. Um okay. and I said a line in uh, in Hindi and I, I I'll try and remember it. I was talking about beautiful hair or something. Apparently I was trying to impress her. Uh, I'll help you. You try, I'll help you. Tum bahut khub sarat ho. Wow fantastic I am going to clap on that <laughs> one you actually remember it it's too bahut khoobsurat ho but you were like 99% there well, so right. it's it's a given to you all, all right. right the best advantage of being really tall being really tall um yes. well it, that wasn't really advantage being a wicket keeper because most wicket keepers are a bit shorter than tall so um I'd further to crouch down um but uh I don't know. Uh on flights they give you extra leg room. <laughs> they would give you extra leg room anywhere Adam for the way you <laughs> play throughout the years. So have you ever tried something that you're really bad at and what was it? Um bowling. Um but really? I must admit I've just given Harbish and Singh a lot of credit about how he used to get me out. I only ever bowled one ball in the IPL and I got Harbhajan and Singh out. <laughs> Fantastic. So Love you it. were not bad at it. In fact, Sorry? if you get him out, if you got him out it, it it was great. No, nah, it wasn't a great delivery. He just tried to hit it into the next state and got caught on the fence. <laughs> All right, we move to the next one. Your favorite role, your favorite role model, the names are Don Bradman, Alan Border, Steve Waugh, Ricky Ponting. Oh. Who's your favorite? Yeah, them? Steve Waugh, Ricky right Ponting. Up. They're the Steve and Ricky are the two that I really played more cricket with. So it's a blend of those. Um I'll go I'll Steve Ponting or Ricky Waugh, one of those. 
<laughs> All right. That, that was interesting. If stranded on a tropical island, what are the two things that you would like to take along with you? Ah, yeah. Um, I would say, jeez, uh, and stop to think about that one. I guess in this day and age, a phone. Why wouldn't you see Melinda? Keep, keep. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking of material items, not the two people I take mm -hmm. with you. Okay, all right. Well, we'll put down. Um, we'll put down my wife and a phone, so I can keep in touch with my kids. That's all right. All right. The most weirdest compliment you've ever received. The best compliment. Weirdest. Ah, oh, I haven't. I don't know. Um, Something that you were taken aback and were like, "What? Did the person really say that?" I, I never thought I had big ears until my mum asked me if I'd like to get them pinned back one day. <laughs> I went, <laughs> "Really?" And I looked in the mirror and went, "Whoa! Look at the size of those!" So, yeah, that was an interesting <laughs> one. Mama knows it best. Yeah. All right. If you could choose a nickname besides Gilly, what would it be? Um. I think a nickname that teammates have given me was Churchy because uh, once when I was just starting out in the Australian team, a young fan ran up to Steve Waugh, Glenn McGrath and I were walking along and he looked at Steve Waugh and went, Steve Waugh, Steve Waugh. And then he looked at Glenn McGrath and went, Glenn McGrath, Glenn McGrath. And then he looked at me and then looked down at the little program he had and he didn't know what, who I was. He, was looking. he said, oh, are you Eric Gilchurch? And <laughs> I don't know where he got that name from, but those. So we went to call you Churchy. So they called me Churchy. It was so much fun chatting with you, Adam. You know, everyone just got to see the serious side of you. But before you came uh, on live, I was actually telling my first encounter with you and how encouraging and supportive you were. You are a great, absolutely phenomenal person to. Uh, work with and uh, I, I'm really glad that I got an opportunity to do that and this to go live with you today Thanks a ton for joining me. I enjoyed it. I hope you had a great time too. It's been lovely and um, Really nice to uh, to be invited my first ever Instagram live and um, Yeah, you're spot on it was so cool to work together over in India and I'm really look forward to getting back there but um Hello to all the, the fans there, both, um, you know, all your fans, which I've uh, been very fortunate to be talking all to. All your fans, all your you fans. Thank you very much. And, um, and remember, keep juggling, okay? Keep juggling. Keep juggling. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank See you, you so much, Adam. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. All my love to Melinda and your kids. You take care. Take care.